I spent uh, two weeks in the province of St. Eugene in India, visiting the Oblates there and their many ministry sites. Uh, I went for a couple reasons to celebrate the 50 years of presence of the Oblates coming from Sri Lanka in India. So Oblates first went there in 1968 uh, and they've really done a, a lot of ministry since first going there. I also went there to uh, look at some possible uh, financial resources for them. Uh, the U.S. province has been rather generous with them in the past and we wanted to continue this good exchange of uh, us providing them some funds for their ministries uh, and then also them providing uh, the opportunity for some of their seminarians and some of their oblate perpetually professed to come over and do some ministry here in the United States. And that's worked out very well. We currently have four oblates uh, ministering in the United States and then uh, a deacon who will be ordained a priest in India in uh, May and go back there to minister. Uh, very impressive uh, what I saw in India. Um, first of all, the welcome that you get when you arrive anywhere. It's really something. Uh, it's rather elaborate. Uh, they paint the middle of your forehead in uh, nice colorful paint. I'm not sure what they call it. Uh, they sing songs of welcome and good health and safety uh, for your visit. Uh, and they also uh, hand a beautiful bouquet of flowers and then put a shawl over your shoulders. And so this is all part of a welcoming ceremony. Uh, all the while they're singing songs, the hosts are singing songs and uh, hoping uh, again for your good health and your safety while you're in the country. The Oblates are located mainly in the south because that's where most Christians and Catholics are. Uh, in fact, right near the Oblate Provincial House in Chennai, uh, is supposedly the uh, martyrdom place of St. Thomas the Apostle, also where he's buried. So I had the opportunity to visit there. But it simply tells you that uh, according to legend, tradition, St. Thomas came to southern India and, and converted a lot of people there. And so that Catholic faith has been kept alive there uh, through his efforts, of course, at the time of Christ. There are oblate missions, however, in northern India as well. Um, I'm not sure of the cities where they're located, but that is not Christian area at all. That's mainly uh, uh, Hindu and Buddhist. But there are oblates uh, ministering to the Christians, Catholics up there, because there's a need for that, for them to do so. The parishes I visited, uh, several of them, a couple things really stand out for me. Um, uh, the one uh, parish, several of the parishes actually, minister basically to day laborers. And so these are guys who get up every morning and try to find any kind of work. Sometimes they're lucky, sometimes they're not. And the type of work would be cleaning toilets, cleaning sewers, herding buffaloes and cows, the dirtiest of work that we can imagine. When they don't find work, which they often don't, they knock on the door of the oblate sometimes, uh, and they uh, tell us that they can't feed their children. And so the Oblates have established an orphanage, they call it a children's hostel. There were 35 uh, young girls and guys in this uh, uh, hostel, and the Oblates ensure that they receive food each day, uh, get good nutrition in fact, uh, clothes and a place to stay. Uh, the Oblates told me that their parents come there and visit with them, they love them, uh, but they just can't afford to feed them and of course they don't want them to starve. So the Oblates have taken them in. The other deep impression I had in visiting the parishes was a trade school that the Oblates have established. It's a trade school to teach women and girls to become tailors. Uh, the, uh, uh, the profession of tailoring seems to be very important in India and a lot of these women and girls can find a job once they finished. So I had the privilege while I visited the parish of handing out these certificates of completion to these women and girls. And boy, broad smiles on their faith. It's a six month course. This was the end of the third six month course that St. Thomas Parish was offering. Uh, and you could see the pride on the face of the pastor also that I think almost every one of them that enrolled in the course uh, brought it to a successful completion. So that was really a, a, a wonderful thing, a privilege for me to do. So two of those things really stand out. The Oblates really work with the poor. One of the sisters who works in our parish, I can't remember what religious community she belongs with, she kind of took me aside at one point. And she said, I love working with the Oblates. 
She said they work the poor, worth the poor. She said their hearts with the poor. And, and that, that was really uh, a, a nice insight to hear from her, uh, freely uh, mentioned to me with not even a question to her about uh, the ministry of the Oblates. Um, there are 120 Oblates in India, not counting over 100 seminarians at various, various levels of formation. So the costs for formation are really great there. Uh, also, the dioceses where the Oblates minister don't provide stipends for them. Uh, they're grateful that we take over parishes uh, in these different dioceses, but they're also poor and they can't uh, provide uh, for the Oblates. Uh, the second to the last day I was there, I went to an ordination of 12 Oblates becoming priests. And that was a very moving ceremony for me. And they even had black hair. Uh, you know, some of our guys, when they get ordained here, they're already in their middle aged and, and their hair is at least starting to turn gray. But this was a very moving ceremony spiritually for me that these dedicated guys who will be going to different uh, missions, a lot of them probably will not be staying in India. The provincial told me that uh, some of them had written to the Superior General, as is the custom uh, of the Oblates, when you uh, ask for your first obedience, you write to the Superior General and ask if you uh, can stay in your home province or not. And many of them, he thought, were asking to go to some far-flung places uh, where the Oblates in India are already helping out in many other parts of the world. Australia, uh, Korea, uh, just to name a few, and so doing good work there. I did talk to the seminarians, the, both the philosophy students and the theology students, and uh, asked them at the end of my talks, would you ever be willing to minister in the United States? And uh, most of them in both groups enthusiastically said, oh, we would, we would, at least for a, for a short period of time. Um, a couple of little negative things, the night driving just drove me crazy. I mean, you see these trucks coming right at your car, uh, and at the last minute, they swerve back <laughs> into their own lane. But I, I was really scared. I was very tired that one night. We had about a three hour drive after visiting the parish missions and uh, thought, well, when I get back to my room, I'll sleep well tonight. Well, you get, I got back to my room <laughs> and I was just tense as heck, you know, because of the, of the drive. Luckily, didn't have any accident, but uh, uh, anyway, it was a scary trip. And all night driving was, even the day driving, you hear the blare of horns all the time of the of the various vehicles. I'd characterize the Indian people in three ways. They're, they're patient, they're polite, and they're pleasing. You might not see the patients in their driving, but otherwise they really take their time when you ask them a question, lose your way, want some directions. Uh, they're, they're very, very willing to help. Uh, they always are smiling, so they're pleasant. Uh, and uh, they, they just try to, to, to please and to help in any way they can. So patience, but other than the driving, then they're not. It was a very good experience for me to see the ministry of the Oblates there. It just confirmed for me that we work with the poor, we really try to help the poor, uh, and I have every confidence because of what I saw there that this same kind of ministry with the poor will continue for the next 50 years of Oblate presence in India.